nothing was planned back in those days. No. Except we knew who was going to win. Yes, sir. So, uh, on that same vein, what's the turbo <coughs> taste like? Nowadays, if they're sautéed, they're all right. <laughs> but back then, they were tough. In fact, my wife, I, did, I need a turnbuckle. She said, you know what happened before you... I said, no. She, <laughs> what's his name? Uh, uh, the champion after Bruno. Pedro Morales. Wiped his underarm on it. <laughs> Not a pretty sight, is it? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yeah, the the mind gimmick that stuff that or where'd that come from? That whole thing. Again, we sit down and we really studied this real hard how we're going to do something like that. And I was at, I was with my wife. We were in uh, Alabama at a hotel motel, and Hillbilly Jim was in the room next door. He said, "Come on over. I want you to meet my friend." So me and my wife go over, and there laying on the bed is Earl. The unstuffed dead cat. It's a flat, unstuffed animal that they sold, and the tail was crooked. They had cross eyes, and it was hanging there. It was like it was a, it had been run over. I said, I gotta have it. <laughs> so I take it for the interview that night. There was a guy with the name of Mean Gene, and I used to love to try to make him laugh. So he's doing the interview. Who's your opponent? I'm going, Earl. <laughs> he asked me something. Earl. <laughs> Earl! <laughs> and then right at the end of the end, I pulled this dead cat out. He cracked up. <laughs> and Bruno, uh, Vince saw it the next day. He calls me and says, What in the world are you doing selling somebody else's product? <laughs> we have to have our own. Design something uh, for yourself that we can use. So I designed the uh, uh. Mind Doll. Uh -huh. I named it mine because I want the kids to fight over it. <laughs> and what do they do when they fight over a toy? Mine. Mine. <laughs> so they, you know, we did it that way. It had it had Velcro on it, so I could stick the hands together in the top rope. Wrestling the guy hits the rope and kind of swing around. Now at that age, I mean, at the end of my career, <laughs> just the action of it swinging around was more action than I was going to give. <laughs> and so I'd have the opponents pick up the uh, take, you know, take it off the ropes hit it, put it on the ground and kick it, and every time they did anything, I sold it like they were doing it to me. And then when they were done, I would do something to them and use a hammer lock or something. And then when they, when I won, I'd have them lift mine's hand. So the kids loved the mind doll. He was doing everything. Same period of time, the cartoon character. I would always get disqualified. Very rarely did I win. Very I didn't really lose. I got disqualified. So I'd go to the arenas and little kids would say, no chairs, don't get DQ'd. Talking about four and five year olds trying to coach me. <laughs> so after I'd get DQ'd, I would throw a couple of chairs in the ring. We have a table like this, throw it in the ring, and then I'd bring the kids in the ring, three or four kids. One would be the announcer, one would be the referee, and they played and had them playing roles. And then I'd get the mic for the announcer. In this corner, or the winner, George Steele, I raised my hand after I got beat, and <laughs> cartoon the whole thing. That went on for about three years, and they finally said, we got to quit that. Somebody's going to get hurt. That's when the corporate world started coming in more and more and more. So they had to be more careful about lawsuits and so on. But I had a lot of fun with that. Kids loved it. it that came to an end in another way, too. I'm going into California. My wife's driving, my chaufferette. Four or five, nine or ten-year-old kids come running up to the car. They're there early. George! George! Is that your mama? Because <laughs> they related to me. That, that, my wife had had enough of that. I coached football. And right across the street from where I coached, I lived. And after I started doing this here stuff, I quit, I quit teach, uh, coaching and in, in teaching in uh, 86, January of 86. But I'm still living right across from where I've taught for 25 years. Kids would come to my door. George, George, can George come out and play? <laughs> so, I really related to my age group. Wow. It was so funny because it's right, you know, where I had this other part of my life going on. Yes, sir. Uh, 